Hello and welcome to Build Series Sydney. I'm your host, Danny Clayton. And previously on this show, we have spoken to models, actors, musicians. But for a first time, we're going to be talking to a world-famous medium. He's an author. He's a TV personality. He is John Edward. Hi, hey guys. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you here. Now, I mean, usually I, I speak with musicians or actors and I, I feel quite safe. I'm going to be 100% honest. I'm actually nervous because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm afraid that this, is, this could go anywhere. It could. Is, is this something that you're used to? People are nervously talking with you like this? S yeah, people get nervous. Sometimes people will reveal things to me that they don't have to because <laughs> they think I already know. I'm scared of the dark. I'm sorry. <laughs> I literally was in a car once with someone who was a producer and we were just like, we were driving to where we're going to, to do like an interview and she just turned to me and she's like, you probably already know this and then <laughs> revealed something that she never should have revealed and I like was like, nope, don't know that, but I will keep your secret, no worries. Okay, because I mean, there's such a mystery ar around what you do. I mean, our perception of mediums come from pop culture. Right. So the things that we see on, on right. television, the movies, and you know, uh, the books we read. So while Harry Potter might paint a very fantastical idea of what you do, the sixth sense might paint a very dark understanding of, right. of what you do. So when you look at these pop culture references to psychics, are there any that are accurate, and are there some that just make you I, laugh? I think it's actually both. I think they, they all have you know some fragment of truth to it like my favorite movie is ghost like i love the movie ghost but it's a movie based on conflict right so they create the conflict in order to resolve it but they touch upon certain things and whoopi goldberg played a great character Odame brown as the medium and i think that that was well written but it's it's hollywood so it's it's they're highlighting certain types of tropes or things that are kind of stereotypical it's really much more subtle than that Still is cool, but way more subtle. Mm. And people are expecting it to be the big billboard message in the sky or it's got to be shocking or wow. And they miss how actual subtle energy is. Mm. So reading about your, your history as, as a kid, you were told by another medium that you could potentially have these abilities. Yeah. And uh, as a young lad, can you remember how that felt being told these things? Oh, I can remember very clearly. Mm -hmm. um, I thought she was crazy. Yeah. Um, I did, I really honestly did. She had agreed to come to my grandma's house to do readings with the caveat that she had to meet me. So my dad was a New York City police officer who was not into the subject matter, mm. actually forbid me to be around it growing up, made my mom make sure that I was out of the house and that none of that stuff um, had anything to do with his son. Well, then my mom and dad separated. We moved into my grandmother's house, which is where all of that stuff happened. And this one woman, her name is Lydia Clark. She now resides in Florida. She had agreed to come to do a house party, but on, on one condition that she wanted to meet me. So my mom told me that, and I was like, so I'm the bait to get her to come? Like, what is that? And I was, and she came, and she, uh, she did a reading for me, and she changed my life. She told me that I had highly evolved beings of white and gold light that were ready to work with me, and she was there to put me on my path. And I literally said, after the fact, like it felt like she said, I parked my spaceship in your grandmother's backyard, wow. and I'll take you for a spin when we're done. <laughs> it, it, it felt like the same to me. Yeah. The second part of her reading was what I refer to as generally specific. It made sense, but I was easy to kind of go, well, this could make sense for any other kind of guy in high school. Mm. The last part, I would have had to have confided in her. She would have had to have been with me to know some of the things that she knew. And then she gave me potential outcomes. And here's where it got weird for me. You could like say some of the things were general, I did. And then there were certain things that I thought, okay, that's kind of weird. Maybe she's like a mind reader that she knew certain things. Mm. But the stuff that she predicted when it started to happen was downright freaky. And I didn't go, oh my God, that's so cool. Okay. I thought, I, I actually felt violated. Wow. I felt this woman, like, knew, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. So for me, my natural progression wasn't, oh, I want to, you know, be psychic. My progression was, I want to make sure nobody else could ever do this again. Uh, can you remember what those things were that she told you? Or can um, you talk about they're, them? They're, they were like just everyday kind of like friends and guy mm. and girl stuff. And there was somebody that I was interested in at the time 
who was interested in somebody else, and then she told me that she wasn't going to wind up with either one of us. Mm. She was going to wind up with somebody else, and then talked about where that person worked, and, and none of it made any sense, except mm. after the fact, I found out more about that person, and it all made sense. Okay. Down to the person's name, like wow. who she was going to wind up with. So she turns up, and she says, you're a wizard, Harry. Pretty much. And basically, <laughs> you now have been given this information that you, you're a little bit skeptical about, when were the first few times that you started to believe in yourself? So my journey was I went to the local public library and I wanted to learn more about, at that time, everything was under the occult section, so I was embarrassed to check the books out. Today they call it New Age, but it went through a lot of different nomenclature. It went from the occult to parapsychology to metaphysics, back to parapsychology before it stuck with new age mm. so i read as much as i possibly could on the subject matter and as i was reading about stuff i remember very clearly thinking this is not psychic this is common sense we all have this like we mm. all have you know an instinct about a person we all have intuition and then i remember getting into one area that i thought was kind of like huh and that was past life regression therapy reincarnation and a concept called past life recall and the reason why this really kind of stood out for me is when I was in high school, actually before I went to high school, my aunt took me on a cruise into the Caribbean, and one of the places that we stopped was Puerto Rico. And I remember walking through the streets of Old San Juan. I had never been there before. And I remember getting, like, I paused in the middle of the block. She kept walking, then she came back. She was like, what's the matter? And I literally said, I was here before, but I wasn't John. I remember clearly saying that. So I was like 12, 13 years old. She laughed. She was like, you've never left New York. What do you mean? And I said, there's something at the end of this block with birds and nuns. Can we go? And I went to the end of the block, and there's remnants of a building that said something about a miracle happening there, a uh, rumor to be a convent, and something called Parca de Palomas, which is a bird park. And as a 12-year-old kid, I was like, what is this? And I turned to her, and she got freaked out, and she was like, we're not going to talk about this. So I blocked it out. And I had that memory come back to me when I was sitting on the floor of the public library, like, there's no way, I should not have known what I knew and had it validated in Puerto Rico when I've never been there before. You know, it's not something that was like a main tourist attraction. Mm. So that was the thing that made me kind of go like, past life recall. Okay, well, that's just, let's unpack that, right? So I learned a lot about Carl Jung. I learned about a lot of people that were like um, historic, historic figures that were Freemasons who had a belief in metaphysics, but yet it wasn't really highlighted. They didn't teach you that in school. Mm. So I started to learn more and more about the subject matter. And the more I learned, the more I thought, well, this is normal, not psychic. So I had to blend the world of being normal to being not normal, to being psychic, to being normal. And that's kind of how my journey started. Wow. Because, uh, I mean, what you do would obviously attract a lot of people trying to prove you wrong. Uh, skeptics would just be... I uh, was that person. You, I mean, you, <laughs> yeah, you were one. I was that person. But now it must be just a, a part of uh, your career is a, a addressing skeptics. And I mean, I'm also a, a, a man of science, but I also don't close my mind off completely to right. things that I don't understand. So when you do a address someone who is completely a a against uh, you know, what you do, uh, is there something that you, you can do to, to prove that you're capable of doing these things? Well, it depends, upon what, it depends upon what that is. So, for example, sometimes if someone's coming at you with a cynical approach, mm. you could tell that they're coming from a place of cynicism. Mm. I don't waste my time with that. Sure. But if someone wants to have a conversation about stuff, then, yeah, we can have a conversation. But if you talk about, like, on the spot, like, read for that person, mm. then they become subjective to that experience and they're looking for their moment to fill in the blank. So it's like if you've been interviewed by like a hard-hitting journalist, they sometimes will produce their story and then do their interview to get the sound bites to drop into the story that they've already pre-produced, right? Okay, I'm not one of those guys. No, no, no. <laughs> but I've been, in, I've been in all of these scenarios, you know what I'm saying, where I, I thought like, no, no, I want to teach and I want to share. Mm. And I remember a producer saying to me like, w why are you doing that interview? And I was like, well, because it's going to reach out to more people and it's news and it's journalism. And it's going to be something that people will take seriously. You know, it's not going to be like, uh, you know, um, an entertainment-based show. Mm. They're going to ask me, like, you know, le legit questions. And all of those shows would do exactly what I just said. Mm. They would produce their show and they would drop stuff in. Yeah. Um, what about times where someone has been a skeptic, but you have convinced them? Can you tell us a story where someone has completely changed their mind, but they've been a really difficult person to deal with? Um, I could tell you, I'll, I'll give you both in the same story, where I had somebody who was a skeptic, 
and became a believer and where someone was a believer and became a skeptic. Okay. And it was a couple that was on the crossing over a TV show that I, I had hosted and a wife dragged her husband to come to the studio. And I don't remember exactly if they lost a child, but whoever came through for them was very specific and very detailed. And I was feeling pretty good about myself. And then after the fact, we, they would do follow-ups where the producers would go and do follow-ups and go home and they would talk about what took place. And I remember asking the producer, Helen, about the, the sh like this one couple. And she got very uncomfortable. And I said, why? What's the matter? And she goes, no, they're, they're, they're not going to want to do that. And I went, why? I go, the husband can't still be a skeptic. And she goes, oh, no, no, he's not. She goes, you actually got him to explore this. And he recognized that there's no way possible that you could know what you knew. I was like, then what's the problem? And she goes, the wife. And I was like, the wife is the problem? I go, I don't understand. She dragged him. She goes, you were too specific. Mm. So because you were so specific, she, she didn't believe that it was real. Mm. So there's an example of you know, like where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Yep. Where she was not, she, she was like, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't general enough to be specific enough. I'm like, that makes absolutely no sense. One of the rules coming into the, the room today was that you had to be kind of open to these experiences. And but here's the funny thing. People say that, but sometimes they don't realize what that actually means. Like I was on a radio station once in the States and the guy said to me, you know, I, I need you to read for me. And I said, no, I don't read hosts of shows. And he goes, oh, thank God. And, <laughs> oh, I'm so relieved. Well, hold on. And then I said to him, and he goes, um, he goes, no, no, no. He goes, you, you could read me. And I said, no, I said, you, you might not be honest. And he goes, why? I said, well, you have the persona that you put out there as the host of the show. I go, and then there's your, your real life. I go, and sometimes those two might not actually kind of meet up. And he goes to me, no, 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 I have legacy in the area. He goes, I've been on the air for years. He goes, I talk about my family all the time. I said, okay, I go, no, I'm going to pass. And he gave me a really hard time. During the commercial, I said, does your family and the audience know that your wife just terminated the last pregnancy because he didn't want to have another child? Wow. And his eyes bugged out. And he went, no. I go, so now if I said that to you on the air, I go, what would you have done? He goes, I would have lied because we are a pretty Christian um, community and blah, 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 blah. I go, now you see why I use my discretion as to when I'm going to say certain things? Mm. And the guy looked at him and he goes, absolutely. I go, now when your mic goes hot again, I go, make sure you tell people you know, the truth. And he did. He said, listen, he goes, there's cer certain things that he did say off the air that, that are accurate. Um, he goes, but we're, I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to affect other people in the family, mm. specifically his mother-in-law. Wow. So yeah, that's why I said, as long as people are honest. I mean, that is quite spectacular. And you're no stranger to doing readings for people who are in the public eye. Uh, sometimes... My, my least favorite thing to do, too. You're the least favorite? Why is that? Because when there's so much stuff that's out about a person, mm. it lends to the, the skeptic. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, yep. it's, it's harder for oh, them. Oh, you could Google that. Yeah. People will always say that. Like, you know, there's, there's people... Know, forget Googling. Like, there, if somebody's known, right? There's so much about a person that's known. You have to break through... If you're dealing with a celebrity, you have to break through the ego of that person, of who they are, or sometimes who they think they are, um, to get them to recognize what's coming. It was my least favorite thing to do on television was to have celebrities sit in front of me. Mm. Was there a celebrity that you enjoyed, though? Was there someone that you enjoyed working with? Um, meeting Kim Kardashian was pretty cool. That was definitely not the name I thought you were going to say. Yeah, No, no, I'm going to tell you why. Because when you have an idea about who somebody might be and then you meet the person and you like you're, you shift that, mm. she, was a, she was a pretty amazing person. Um, there's, there's, been a, there's been a few um, like, that I've met over the years that I could say like, that have been cool. But it's hard. It's hard when, when they're when there's so much known about a person. It's mm. one of the reasons why I don't read my own family and friends for the same exact reason, because I want to make sure that I like to have objectivity. Like when you don't know somebody, then you just go with what you get. Mm. So you were saying that um, you know, Kim was surprising and very fun. How did she respond? Uh, I mean... Skeptical. She, she was skeptical? I think so. I think she was, she was a healthy skeptic. I yep. think, yeah. And then by the end? I think hopefully I shifted that. I like to see how far you could push stuff. Like I feel like, like right now, if I was to say to you guys, who here, just by a sh showing of hands, how many of you feel like you've made connections with people who have passed on your own, where people who have crossed over have let you know that they're around? Just throw your hands up. One, couple, okay. Now, if I was dealing with an audience that, wa that had substantial loss, where loss is something that is part of your everyday life, where you're thinking about it, experiencing it, missing that person, um, you're gonna see patterns build up. And what's normal, or to see those patterns happen where you associate that with a certain person. So it might be seeing 
butterflies. It might be seeing dragonflies, hummingbirds, finding change, seeing patterns of numbers like 1111, um, any type of symbolic way that that person who's crossed wants to get your attention, they use it as a shorthand or an avatar to mm -hmm. let you know that it's them. I know that, any medium that does this work knows that, so I like wanna take that off the table when I'm doing readings for people to the point that I'll disappoint them and say, listen, I know you wanna hear me talk about your photos, your jewelry, your tattoo, and all of these symbols, but I'm, I don't wanna talk about that. If they do want me to talk about your tattoo, well then I wanna know the story attached to it. If you want me to talk about your jewelry, then I want them to give me a story that's connected to it. I like to push that. Mm. It's challenging for me not to get lazy. Okay, so do you think that some people are better at picking up these energies than others? Yes, I and, do. And is it like a muscle? Is it, it is. something that you can exercise and practice? So let's say someone here in this room is looking at you and going, all right, I would like to practice. I'd like to get better at something that John right. does. What do they do? How do they get better? I think knowledge is power. So I think understanding energy is really, really important. So one of the books that I recommend all the time is a book called Hello from Heaven, and it's a 20-year-old book. It's written by Bill and Judy Guggenheim. They studied over 7,000 case studies where people made connections with loved ones and friends, and there's not a psychic in the book. It's just regular, everyday people, and they, I, 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 they categorize them. Mm. And I, I've had so many people that I've recommended that book to when they didn't think they had had an experience. And then when they read this book, they go, well, yeah, I, I had that, but I didn't realize that was being psychic. Mm. But how do we differentiate? Because, you know, I think nearly all of us have had that moment where the hairs stick up on the back of our necks. And when we've walked into a room right. and gone, oh, okay, this is, it feels like maybe something could be here. Like something a little bit freaky deaky is happening. But then on the other side of the freaky spectrum, deaky. I've, I've got like a, a housemate who's convinced Steve Irwin watches him shower. So you, how do we differentiate what is, you know, real? What is something and what isn't? I think by questioning it, you know, I, I question everything. Like I was the kid that literally they would say stuff to me like, why did we teach you how to speak? Mm. Um, why don't you go take a short walk off a long pier? Because I was always asking questions about everything. I wanted to know more and more and more and more. So I think that the more we question things, that's why I like being skeptical. I think it's okay to be skeptical because really what we're doing is we're approaching something and we're trying to discern if it's real or if it's not real. We're being a critical thinker about something. A lot of times their energy is electromagnetically charged, right? Uh, and, and energy outside of the physical body can manipulate anything electromagnetic. So mm. yes, lights can flicker and that could be a sign from them. But sometimes it just means the bulb needs to be changed, <laughs> right? It's not like grandma's coming through. Yep. So I think you have to learn and recognize what to call certain things. Okay. So I'm a big fan of reading a book, like learning about energy and, and, and reading what people have written about the subject matter and, and, and what you would call you know, certain things. Okay. Like how many of you have actually smelled something that reminded you of a place from your childhood? Just, you know, something that's random, right? So that smell triggers for you a memory. So you smell that food, it takes you back to that restaurant. You smell that thing and it takes you back to your childhood. Well, it's no different than if, you know, your grandfather smoked a pipe with a specific tobacco and now all of a sudden nobody around you smokes that and you're in the middle of your car and all of a sudden, boom, you smell that, what are you gonna think about? Your grandpa. You're gonna think about your grandpa. That's how it works. Mm. Um, or there might be that moment where you get that thought where you're like, oh, I gotta call my friend Mike. I gotta call my friend Mike. I gotta call my friend Mike. But before you call your friend Mike, Mike calls you. So now which one of you is being psychic? Are you picking up on Mike calling you or is it that you you just didn't act on it, and he did. Mm. And the alternative is it just by some cosmic cosmic chance that you were both thinking about each other at the same time. Right. See, but I don't believe in that. Like, I I believe that things coincide for a reason. Mm -hmm. I think that there's there's a reason why things are happening. So that's where I now start looking at what's the lesson in that. Mm. So for me, I'm now at a point in my career where you used a Harry Potter reference. I have an astrologer that said to me, which I didn't take like. I had that moment of like, he was giving me information and he said to me, you're moving out of your Harry Potter years. <laughs> and I looked at him and I was like, what? He goes, yeah, you're moving into your Dumbledore years. Okay. And I was like, dude, did you just call me old? <laughs> and he said to me, he's like, no, no, no. He goes, it's like, you know, you went from that exploration of 
learning to be a wizard to now actually having the knowledge and applying it and teaching it to others. Mm. So I was like, well, can I be early Dumble? Like, where do I got to go full beard, you know? But that's how I, and I feel like he was accurate. I feel like that's where I'm at now in my life where I, I want to teach people about recognizing the importance of energy, not just because they should connect with their loved ones and friends, but what about the choices that you're making? And what about learning about patterns? And what about recognizing the repeating of relationship dynamics? Mm. And what about what happens in your family dynamic and how that gets passed down? And that if you didn't learn your lesson here, you're gonna learn it here. All that comes up in readings. Mm. So to, to look at that is important. Okay, so you're very good at what you do in the psychic world, but even Kelly Slater wipes out. Can you tell us a time that you may have wiped out um, I could tell you that there are things that I've, I, I remember doing a reading for a woman once and at the end of the reading I said to her, um, do you have any questions? And I was feeling pretty good about the reading by the way. And she said, yeah, she goes, this was, this was good. She goes, interesting. She goes, I'm just curious to know, like, is my son going to come through? And like, after you've just now spent an hour with someone talking to whomever's coming through, mm. feeling pretty confident about it. And then all of a sudden, the one person that they actually booked the appointment for is not the person who comes through. Mm. That is a horrible feeling. Yep. It's out of your control, but it, it, it still feels like, you know, feel, it feels bad. Um, I remember another time where I was doing a, a group, there were about 18 people in the room, and I said um, um, a woman's mom was coming through, and, at, and it was very emotional, and at the end I said to her, there's only two things your mom didn't come through with. How she passed and when she passed. Everything else she gave me. And through her tears, she said in front of everybody, she goes, that's because she hasn't. Oh, no. And I literally had this moment of like, what? And for about five seconds, not even five seconds, like two seconds, I was like, oh, my God. Like all the, you know, the critics are right. Like maybe I'm just like reading people's minds or something. And I says, what do you mean? And she said, my mom's brain dead. She's been in a coma for X number of years. So the one moment that made me feel like I misinterpreted was actually now the moment that actually reinforced for me, this is just a, a vessel, and our consciousness is the driver, the driver of that. In this room, it, would you have to open yourself up to, these, uh, to the people sitting in front of us? Or do yeah. sometimes things just slam? Like, are you picking up anything? I'm actually not. At all? No. No. But I, I can try. It, it, it would be lovely if you could try. I am going to say... And again, I'm going to ask you guys to be as honest as possible. So if you don't want to um, be too revealing, just kind of say, I understand that. And that'll be my clue to shut up. Okay. Um, is there somebody here that lost a relative to a suicide? So I might sound nice when I'm being interviewed. I'm kind of dicky when I read. So yep. let me just be really clear. Like if I, if I say that I'm saying this, like I'm now taking on them energy wise and I kind of really do surrender my ego and I don't really care. So somebody wants to claim that their actions brought about their passing, which means how they got there is as a result of what they did. You guys are all safe from this side over, not safe. So if you have that, that's where, that's where I'm going. So the thing is, in your minds now, you go to the place of who would I want to hear or who am I connected to? No, nobody in my immediate family passed that way. But if you're connected to the person, then sometimes you become me. So from here over, like over there, you guys are not safe. So if you have that, this is a, just so you know, I can't, I can't see you, so I need to hear you. When you qualify it by saying years ago, what does that mean? It means it doesn't matter. So I'm here to tell you it does matter, and it doesn't matter. Like if you asked about, if you said to your friend, hey, by the way, you know, this is what happened, this would be your, her father's way of letting you know that he's okay, correct? Now, did you know this man? No. So you know just the friend? Yeah, she's my best friend. My closest okay, so friend. we'll call her like a sister figure, right? Yeah. So if she's that sister figure, there's unanswered and unfinished issues always when someone passes that way, correct? Okay, now did this happen? Um, you did not know her at the time, so you know her. No. You met her after that fact? Yeah. Okay, is there an S name connected to her or is there an S connection to you? My last name starts with S. Okay, and <laughs> where are the twins in the family? Or who would have the connection to... I'm seeing the sign of Gemini. So for me, the sign of Gemini means that somebody either is a twin, has twins, or the sign of Gemini is significant. Um, 
I don't think she has anyone who has twins. In the so family. I want you to tell her, or show her this, and say that under the sign of Gemini, there's something significant about her dad's side of the family, or for that side of the family. Okay. Um, and I also feel like I'm supposed to talk about the birth of a child. So I don't know if there's any conversation about her having a child, but I feel like there's a conversation about children in the family. So has someone, is he a grandfather yet? No, no. There's, there's a conversation about the birth of a child. So um, in that moment, I would say that would be a cautionary message. Okay. Because if someone's not looking for that, caution might yeah. want to be yeah. kind okay. of put out there. Um, <laughs> just saying. She has a large family, so I don't know, maybe. But <laughs> she personally, like, does not have a child. No, she, she doesn't even have a boyfriend, so... <laughs> <laughs> One doesn't preclude the other, just so you know. <laughs> um, is her mom still here? Um, no, her mom's in India. But living? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. When I say here, I mean... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean like here in Australia, but just like, yeah. like living. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it's Im Im important that if we're looking at this, if you can let them know that he came, that he came through. Okay. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of unanswered questions, not just, not just about the passing. I think there's unanswered questions about the family dynamic and issues of paternity inside that family in a different capacity. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. No. Okay. <laughs> show her this. Okay. Or show the mom this. Okay. Mm. Okay? I might be jumping to somebody else in the same section, but somebody passed in a vehicle accident. Somebody was killed. Yeah. Hi. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Somebody accident. passed in a vehicle accident. Yeah. Okay. And where's the M connection? Not an M, no. No, no, no. They don't have to be, the M doesn't have to be the person. It's just, I'm very OCD, so like when I give information, I like to back it up, and then I like to back it up again. Mm -hmm. So I try to continue to do that so that you know that I'm talking about you and not somebody over here who might have something similar. So you have the person who passed in the vehicle accident, correct? Yeah. Okay. That means you also have the person who has an M name living or passed in your family. I know the month of April or the fourth of a month is going to be tied to your family as well. Um, was that person driving? No, passenger. Okay. The reason why I'm asking you that is I feel like they can't take the responsibility on for what happens to them. So in other words, like it's not their fault. Um, if I go like this, like with the girl that's sitting next to you, I knew it was a suicide that I was talking about because the energy was giving me the feeling of, and when I get that feeling, it's like I'm taking all the responsibility for this. If I'm dealing with an accident and I don't get that feeling, Susan, I ask if they were driving, it means that they're not taking on the responsibility for that. Um, and then I have to tell you again, I'm seeing it. There's an M. There's a really strong connection to an M. So it's either their way of telling me, say hello to Mary or acknowledge Mike, but there's an M name that they want me to highlight um, or that person's passed. So let's go over the stuff again. What's the four connection for you? Like the fourth month, April, or the fourth of a month, birthday or anniversary? Um, no, it's neither. No, see, so you're, you're, you're doing the same thing. You're applying what I'm saying to what you're... <laughs> There is a connection to the month of April, or there is a connection to the fourth of a month. Uh, my father passed away. Uh, he had an accident. It wasn't his fault. He right. was driving a scooter. And my mother's name is Margaret. OK. And what's the four connection? Uh, so My brother and I both are born in April. Done. OK. <laughs> so to me, the importance of that is their way of va validating for you like that, that's, that's why I kind of keep sticking at this. Um, when your dad passed, did your dad come to you in a dream? Uh, probably must have, not okay. one that I recently remember. So I'm gonna tell you that dreams are probably like one of the number one ways for somebody to come through us, but there are dreams, and I say like 95% of the time, our dreams are just that, they're dreams. Then there's that 5% where it's a visit or a visitation. And that is profound, that you could have had it 30 years ago and you're gonna remember that. Um, I just wanna go back and say something again. I feel like your dad came through to someone in a visit where it's a profound feeling where he let somebody know that like he was okay. Um, and do you know if there's any type of, now this would be something I would think more of a, for a girl, um, but I'm just gonna say it, uh, a bracelet or some, or some cuff. What's the story of like, the, you know how like Wonder Woman has her cuffs that she wears? You know, Gauntlets. Her golden bracelets, okay. right? Why would I see symbols of that? I don't know. Like, 
do you have those? No. Uh, Not Wonder Woman, but like, do you have like those nah. types of cuffs? I don't have any hand jewelry, except for rings. So. No, this is not a ring. Um, and it's actually just one that I'm saying. I feel like I'm supposed to talk about one cuff that I'm supposed to highlight. Nah. Just remember that I'm saying that, but I feel pulled again over there. So between the two of you. So sometimes if there's like a current event, let's say yesterday you were out shopping and you picked this up in the store and you looked at it and then you put it back down. It's like your dad's way of saying, hey, I was with you when this happened. Um, are we going back 10 years that he's gone? How long has he gone? No, I was really young. I was three and a half. So, so 30 years back. Okay. So can we go back 10? Let's, okay. let's go back 10 years. Yeah. What was the transformation that happened 10 years ago for you? About a decade, um, like a life change. Started working like full time. And so that was a, a big shift for you. Yeah. Like, like where you could say like your life took a turn. Um, start. I jumped. I got into media sales, and I've been doing it all through. So. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so ten years ago, that's where things yeah. shifted. Okay. Would that be something that if if people would not? Okay. Is it surprising for people to learn that that's what you do? Like, all my close friends and family know it, so... I know that they know that you do it, but do they find that it's out of character or personality for you in some way that you, that you do that? No. Or you do whatever it is that you do? No, they're not surprised. Okay, so let's flip this around. If they found out, and I'm not saying you are, but if they found out you were a stripper, <laughs> would, that find, would they find that shocking? It's funny you say that because I'm doing pole dancing. <laughs> This is not going where I thought it was going to go. <laughs> say it again. Uh, <laughs> Funny you I say that, why? She's doing pole dancing. <laughs> but exercise. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So for the kids fitness. are doing it these days. <laughs> so, for real? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, doing it for a year and a half. So they were surprised in the beginning, but okay, it's so, no big deal now. <laughs> but this is a great example of, in, of interpreting what I'm seeing, right? <laughs> so if, if we look at your dad's way of saying, like, hey, I see what's, where you're at in your life, right? It might sound crazy that he would use something along those lines, but it's not if it's factual, right? So now the fact that he brings up that your family or he would be surprising that you're doing that for fitness and exercise and a, a, a release, that also tells me that that cuff belongs to you as well, that that message goes to your family in some way. So those are the moments that I go back to and say, I like to go back to highlight the things that didn't make sense. So that validation validates this for me as well. Wow, okay, that was, that was something else. I, I've got a hundred more questions now, <laughs> um, but I do have to let you go eventually. Okay. Um, so I did want to touch on something that was a little bit darker, which is death. Oh, sure. Uh, and that is, I mean, we all have to die. It's the great equalizer. Uh, how do you personally feel about mortality? I think that this subject matter and being as immersed in it as I've been for now four decades, I'm not afraid of mm. death. The prospect of how we get there, of course, like any other person, you know, that's an uncomfortable subject matter. Mm. But we labor to come into this world and we labor to leave. And in both instances, we're met by family and love. Mm. And that's how I look at it. And Terry Pritchard, uh, who's a great author, says that no one truly dies until the ripples of their life fade away, uh, which I kind of see as quite a sweet and r romantic way of looking at, at death. And when he references these ripples, is that what you're reading? Is that what you're talking to, these ripples? And uh, I'll follow up on that, is will those ripples eventually fade away completely? I don't think that the ripples fade away. I think that the cognizant, conscious connections that people here on the earth plane have to them dissipate, um, which is why I think history is so important um, and knowing history. I, I could tell you like in the last 10 years, it's been really interesting for me to see the differences in readings because most people come and they only want to hear from, and I'm going to use her as the example, like, you know, her dad is a prevalent loss for her. So that, that's a big deal. Right. But a lot of folks don't know their their ancestors. They don't know their grandparents. They might not know their great greats. They don't know dates and how people passed. And more importantly, they don't have an emotional tie or a connection to it. Mm. 
So those people don't come through as often because you can't validate them. Mm. Same thing with people who are adopted. Their biological family do stay connected to them. However, they're not going to come through in a reading because they might not know them. So therefore, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Mm. So as long as we can connect and, and validate that connection, folks, or those ripples, um, that, that consciousness, which is, by the way, love, is still tethered to us. Brilliant. So we do have many questions okay. flying through from uh, people who are watching, um, and all very, very varied. Um, uh, someone uh, wanted to ask, what's your advice on how to tap into one's psychic ability? Um, knowledge, always. So I think meditation is probably the first step, figuring out what form of meditation works for them. Um, I am a big proponent of something called psychic self-defense. Sounds crazy, right? Like like ninja psychic, right? Mm. But it is kind of like that. You want to energetically protect yourself um, when you're doing a reading because you're basically going into someone else's vibration, right? Is there a reason we should be afraid? Yes. I mean, are there, are there demons? Can you tell us? Well, how about forget demons? How about recognizing that other people's energies can affect you, right? So how many of you think about when you're going into work or you're going to sit next to a colleague or you're going to have lunch or where you're sitting or how you're connected to a person, how you're going to engage with that other person. That other person's energy can affect you in a really big way. So you want to be able to protect yourself from that. So mm. it's a prophylactic way of protecting your energy so that you're allowed to be involved in the energy but yet not take something on from it. So meditation, psyche self-defense, and then I'm, um, I recommend people learn a tool. So I call them psychic tools in the workplace, astrology, numerology, tarot. They're basically keys to help unlock your intuition, psychometry. Brilliant. Um, we, we have a, a, a tricky question. Sure. Uh, and someone said, what do you think of the portrayal of uh, South Park? I was Thank waiting you. for that. <laughs> I looked at the audience. I was like, somebody's got to bring it up. Um, when that, I, you know, the funny part is like when South Park first came out, mm. one of my friends came over and said, you have to watch this episode. It's absolutely hysterical. Mm. And it was the episode with the Christmas poop. Uh, and I sat there and I watched it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I sat there and I watched That's it. And I was like, piece of I go, <laughs> it's funny. I go, not, not really my humor. And I had a reaction to it. And he goes to me, you're having a reaction to, to the show. And I was like, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> well, I think I know why now, right? So I, I say this. It's not a flattering depiction. But at the same time, I have an entire episode of South Park dedicated to me being the biggest douche in the universe. Oh yeah, you you don't you don't get that unless you. Permeated. I would pay for that to happen to me. Right, um, unless <laughs> I don't think my dreams come unless true. Unless you unless you permeated the zeitgeist in some way. And here's the craziest part about that: that same show, which you know is not flattering or negative, done as an assault, has actually brought me a young audience because now people want to know who I am, to look me up, they find me, they read the books, they watch clips on YouTube. And it is their introduction to a belief or a philosophy in the afterlife. Mm. So to me, it's become somewhat of a, you know, um, a bridge to another audience. Brilliant. Um, and speaking of other audiences, uh, this is really a great question about language as a barrier. Um, do readings come through? Can you talk to people who speak other languages? I can. But I l am not going to lie to you that I get a little paranoid. My, o my, my OCD kicks in, and I sometimes will get in the way of uh, other people's readings culturally, especially when it comes to names, because mm. I'm so used to hearing stuff that I, I, I think, like, oh, my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess something up. I did a reading for a woman who was from Egypt, and her dad came through. And I was like, um, your dad has an S name. And she goes, he does. I'm like, I'm not going to get it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get it. And I, I, I flipped out. And I, at the end, I was like, Okay, what was your dad's name? And she's like, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. It's a, but I, I, you know, and, my, silent, eh? and my wife's family's Portuguese. I don't speak Portuguese. So whenever they come through, like when her, her family members come through, I will either have to get their name as an equivalent to the English and tr get her to translate back. Mm. Um, but the problems come in with cultural references. If there's a cultural reference, I might misinterpret something based upon, you know, what that cultural reference is. Wow. Okay. And uh, one last question from uh, the audience and viewers. If reincarnation exists, how is it possible to speak to those in the afterlife? Can both realms coexist? The answer is yes. Okay. Both realms can coexist. So I'll give you this analogy. My mom passed when I was 19. So I was a little bit freaked out. Like if I lived, you know, another 80 years, 70 years, however, I'm, I'm, that's a lot of years 
where she can come back. So my whole concern was, I'm going to get there. I want to see her. Mm. I don't want somebody there going, oh, you just missed her. She's back in Brisbane. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my, yeah. that was my concern. So I went to the foremost researcher on the subject matter. His name is Dr. Brian Weiss. He comes here often. So if you guys ever have the opportunity to see Brian, please go see him. And, um, and I had a conversation with him. And I'll just give you the analogy, one of them that has kind of come up from that. If you take a pitcher of water, that water is your soul or your consciousness. If a lifetime is a shot glass, you could pour that water into that shot glass and it could exist in two different dimensions. Wow. Okay. Now, uh, if I, I have so many more questions. I'm, I'm sure you guys are also very, very curious. So you've got loads of books and you're going to be doing shows all around Australia, but it would be criminal of me to let you go without asking you what I think is probably the most important question you've ever been asked in your entire career. Okay. Do dogs cross over and will I see my dog again? Yes. Yes? Oh 100%. my God, that's such a relief. Can I tell you that it's, an, it's one of the most important things that people, when they come for readings, are so surprised and shocked that our fur family members are still part of our orbit, mm. that they're still there. Um, they are the epitome of love. They teach us unconditional love. And um, You're going to make me cry if you talk like this, honestly. No, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm, really, I'm really serious. I think yeah. it's so important because they are part of our extended family and they don't want anything from us. They just give back. So they're here for a really brief period of time in our lives, but they change our lives and they change how we feel um, and they affect us. So that love that leaves us stays, stays with us. And I will leave you with this. Um, my first assistant had a golden retriever named Sonny. And then this woman, Ellen, retired. And we would touch base every couple of months, every week, you know, a couple of weeks. I had a dream that I was walking through a forest on a path and like Tigger does to Winnie the Pooh, this little golden retriever puppy comes flying out of the forest and is like, you know, jumping up my leg. And in the dream, I knew this was Sunny. So the next morning I woke up and was like, I got to call Ellen. So I called Ellen and I was like, hey, what's going on? I go, I had the strangest dream last night. I dreamt about Sonny, except Sonny was a puppy. So what's going on? And she said, I had to put Sonny down two days ago. Mm. So Sonny came through and got me to call Ellen and came through as a puppy, not as the old version, but as the young, like energized version wow. of her best puppy self. God, now I've got this image of my childhood dog patiently sitting in the afterlife waiting for me. I'm going to probably cry my ass off after this, but I can tell you what, it's an absolute pleasure talking Thank with you, you uh, about you. all things uh, psychic. Uh, Mr. John Edward, please, a round Thank of applause. You guys. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. This has been John Edward here on Build Series Sydney.